All right, what is going on guys? So today I'm gonna to take you through a full day of eating on a lean bulk. So I'm gonna show you guys every meal, the nutrient breakdown of those meals and the rationale behind the food choices, meal timing, distribution, and so on. And for the last few months, I've been following a strict body recomposition approach to my nutrition, following the guidelines in my new body recomposition guide that I'm excited to say is finally available for pre-order on jeffnipper.com. Many of you guys know I've been working on this project for the last six months or so with my good friend and nutrition researcher, Chris Barakat. And it's the exact protocol that I'm gonna be following for the rest of my lean bulk. So the book is gonna be 30% off for the pre-sale. And if you pre-order, you'll get two chapters sent to your inbox right away. And then as soon as it launches, you'll get all 15 chapters, which includes sample meal plans, pre and post-workout nutrition examples, a full supplements list, a chapter on training, skinny fat, and even a guide for recovery factors like sleep and stress. And I'm also offering customer service with this. So if there's anything you don't understand in the manual, uh, there's a support email that you guys can contact. And if you guys pre-order the nutrition book, you can get 30% off any training program as well as a bundle. So if you guys are interested in taking your nutrition to the next level, I'll have the new nutrition guide as the first link in the description box down below. Uh, so since Steph and I have been back here in Kelowna, we've been kicking off every morning with a morning walk. So I'll wake up, I'll usually weigh in, and then I'll drink some water, and then we'll walk to Tim Hortons where we get a coffee. There isn't anything really special about doing that walk fasted. Uh, it just helps kind of wake me up and get me ready for the day. Okay guys, we just got back from our walk. I'm gonna get some breakfast ready. First, I wanna show you guys what my macro targets are gonna be for today. I've got 225 grams of protein, 75 grams of fat, and 300 grams of carbs. And that will give me an approximate caloric target of 2,800 calories per day. A couple months ago, I was more around the like 2,600 calorie range. Uh, but since then, I've gradually increased that number up. And over the next three or four months, I'm gonna to try to increase that number further to somewhere around 3,200, maybe 3,400 or more calories per day while maintaining the amount of fat that I have on me. So my goal is to build as much lean mass as possible while minimizing the amount of fat mass that I gain. Now, some people will note that that protein figure is really high for my body weight. I'm only 163 pounds. However, I do think it's better to go too high on protein than too low, especially when your goal is recomposition. And there's at least four reasons for that. The first is that extremely high protein intakes have been shown to improve a body composition in the literature, even as high as 3.4 grams per kilogram. So that's just over 1.5 grams per pound, which is super high for protein intake. Also protein is the most satiating macronutrient. It also has a higher thermic effect than carbs or fats. And also I think you have nothing to lose by going higher on protein. And very high protein intakes have been repeatedly shown in the scientific literature to be safe for bone health, the kidneys, and the liver. So I think a simple cost benefit analysis is gonna show you that it'd be better to go too high than too low. And then I set my fats at around 25% of my total caloric intake and then just fill in the rest with carbs. Um, and I should say, I don't always track macros. Um, sometimes I will take more of an intuitive approach depending on the day. And I have been tracking for like, I don't know, a decade. So I have a really good idea of what's in foods. Um, but since I've been focusing more on body recomposition, I have been tracking more diligently. Um, so we're definitely gonna do that today. All right, let's get breakfast. So for breakfast, just gonna be doing the usual here. I'm gonna do some scrambled eggs, some turkey bacon, uh, some goat cheese on the eggs, uh, kiwi, of course, do that every morning. And um, what else? Oh, and some hash browns or, well, potato patties, technically. Oh yeah. I don't know about you, that looks like a good breakfast to me. <laughs> I don't know, man. People always give me a hard time for this breakfast. They're like, why, why, why are you eating those foods? Why the hash browns? And you know, most of it, for this meal, most of it just comes down to, it's a high protein meal. It's relatively low carb, which I like to do because I like to partition my carbs more around the workout and later in the day when my appetite picks up. And other than that, it's just an enjoyable breakfast with foods that I like. So guys, I'm gonna put the macros for this meal up here on the screen. You guys can pause if you wanna check it out. And also I'll have two fish oil capsules and three, uh, well, it's actually just one serving of a, a multivitamin. Uh, I do try to have one or two servings of fatty fish per week, but I'm not, I don't always follow through on that. So um, I just take two of these just to be safe. And I think of a multivitamin kind of as like a nutritional insurance. I think you should always try to max out your whole food options first. And if you do a good job with that, you probably don't need a multivitamin. Um, I like a quote from Alan Aragon. He says, a poor diet with a multivitamin is still a poor diet. Uh, but I think in the case of athletes, where it's really common to have nutrient deficiencies, it does make sense to supplement with, with a multivitamin for no real 
downside. So anyway, that's why I do that. I'm gonna dig in, enjoy this meal, and I'll catch up with you guys in the next one. All right guys, up next, we're gonna be doing our pre-workout meal. Now I would say the pre-workout meal is the most important meal of the day because ultimately it's gonna be responsible for fueling your training, which is what's gonna drive your body recomposition progress forward. So I would say for most of the other meals, the actual timing of the meals isn't so important, but for the pre-workout meal, that's one that I definitely would pay much more attention to. All right, so guys, for the pre-workout meal, I've got a chicken sandwich here. I've got some fresh chicken breast, some shredded cheese, mayo, some spinach, and a little bit of mustard on some ancient grains bread, which is my favorite bread. And then I've also got uh, 100 grams of blueberries over here, and I'm gonna have a banana to go along with that. Um, so for the pre-workout meal, I recommend a soft minimum of one gram of carbs per kilogram of body weight. Um, so for me, that amounts to about 75 grams of carbs. And you also wanna prioritize choosing carb sources that are gonna utilize multiple transporters for absorption. Jorn Tromelin was nice enough to send me a copy of his PhD dissertation, and as part of his thesis, he recommends co-ingesting glucose and fructose to fuel performance as they use different intestinal transporters for absorption. So the simplest way to do this is to just combine a starchy carb source like bread with a fruit source, which is high in fructose. So for any pre-workout meal, I always recommend having at least one fruit source like a banana, and then I also like to include some berries. So these are the macros for the meal. We've got 46 grams of protein, 13 grams of fat, and 82 grams of carbs, which is gonna make this my highest carb meal of the day. And so for a meal of this size, generally I try to eat it about one hour out from the workout itself, and then about 15 to 20 minutes before I leave for the gym, I'll start sipping on my pre-workout, and I try to time that to be about 30 minutes before my first working set uh, in a perfect world. And that's when you're gonna get the most benefit out of the caffeine. So I'm gonna dig in, eat this meal, let it digest a little bit, start sipping on my pre-workout, and then we're gonna hit a workout. Let's go. All right, so guys, we're about 30 minutes into the workout, and at this point is usually when I'll have my intra-workout nutrition. Now, I wouldn't say an intra-workout feeding is mandatory, but I would advise it under any of the following five circumstances. Um, so the first one is you're really trying to optimize your training performance. Second of all, you have plenty of carbs to spare, so you're not on like a lower carb diet and you don't wanna waste them uh, just by like drinking them or eating in for workout. Third, your workouts last longer than an hour. If you have relatively short workouts, I don't think it's necessary at all. Uh, you train fasted, so you didn't have a pre-workout meal. Probably a good idea to get some carbs in. And finally, uh, it's been three to five hours since your pre-workout meal. That's more similar to fasted where you might want some extra nutrients to keep energy levels high. Um, so for me, what I've been doing is just popping back a few of these fuzzy, fuzzy peaches. So the main idea is you wanna have a fast digesting carb source just for continued energy through the workout. And as a general rule, you wanna have about a half a gram of carb per minute of training starting around 30 minutes into your workout. So say your workout lasts for an hour, you'd start at 30 minutes, have some fast digesting carb source, and you'd have about 15 grams of carbs. So half a gram per minute after that first 30 minutes. Um, so for me, 15 grams of carbs, it's just like five or six of these. Pop back like a few of those throughout the rest of the workout. And that's really all there is to it. Sometimes I'll go for a liquid carb source. So I'll just like mix up some Kool-Aid or Tang or something like that. Um, but for lately, I've just been going with the fuzzy peaches. So anyway, we're gonna crush the rest of this workout. I'll check in with you guys back home. All right guys, just got back from the gym. We're gonna have our post-workout meal. Now, whenever I finish up a workout, my appetite isn't the strongest, and so I don't really try to rush to get protein in as quickly as possible. Um, my rule for timing your nutrients post-workout is that it's much less urgent than pre-workout. Like I said earlier, I think pre-workout's the most important meal. For the post-workout meal, I think you should try to get some protein in as quickly as you conveniently can. So if that means slamming a shake after your workout, Perfect, that's great. Um, if you don't have much of an appetite like me, it's perfectly fine if you wait until you get home and have a meal. And I would say according to the best evidence that we have on this, um, the general recommendation is to not space your pre and post-workout meals by more than four to five hours. So for me, I went to the gym, uh, or no, I ate my pre-workout meal at one. So I would wanna make sure if I'm trying to optimize everything that I have my post-workout meal in by no later than say five, maybe 6 p.m the wider that window gets around the session, the more likely you are to potentially impede your recovery or miss out on some potential gains because the muscle is most sensitive to amino acid uptake 
after resistance training, and then it starts to go back down. So there is some anabolic window, it's just that it's much wider than people originally used to think. So anyway, with all that said, we're gonna get a meal ready over here. So this is kind of like a quick and easy snack, more or less. Like I said, I don't have like my biggest meal post-workout, but I do like to have something. So I'll leave this out. So yeah, that should be one serving of oats. This is select protein for oats. Now, you don't need to use this kind of protein powder, but I like it because it does mix really well. And it's also a whey casein blend. And I actually like blended proteins post-workout. Um, according to one of my favorite books on nutrition of all time, The Protein Book by Lyle McDonald, um, combining casein and whey post-workout may have a benefit compared to consuming either one in isolation. Of course, we're talking about like the tip of the iceberg here, but I'll just kind of mix that together. So I'll stick this in the microwave for a minute. Um, so anyway, here are the total macros for that meal. We've got 34 grams of protein, four grams of fat, and 25 grams of carbs. And even though I think a lot of people make a, a big deal out of carbs in the post-workout period, I think they're more important pre-workout where they're actually gonna fuel training. And where my appetite is a little lower after training, I tend to, like I said earlier, partition more of my carbs toward later meals in the day. It's so just for simple adherence purposes, I'll have a little bit lower carb intake post-workout. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna finish up this meal and I'll check in with you guys for the next meal. All right guys, it's been a couple hours since my post-workout snack, so I'm gonna have another meal. So it's kind of interesting because now my appetite is really starting to pick up that it's later in the day. This is always when I get the hungry. This is around like between 6 to 10 p.m. So I'm gonna have a huge meal right now. So this is a big Tupperware full of chili uh, that my mom made for me. So what my mom will do is she'll cook for me, <laughs> I'm pretty lucky in this sense, um, either salmon or spaghetti or chili like three or four nights a week and just give that to me um, in Tupperware with the macros. You know what I'm saying? With the macros. <laughs> so um, basically it just makes it really easy for me to track. So. I'm gonna eat all of this. This is a three cup serving of chili. And in here, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna heat it up first and I'll show you what we got. So and I don't know like if there's nothing to input because obviously my mom made the chili. I don't wanna put in everything individually. I'll just add, like in my fitness pal, I'll just go protein macro. You can search for that. And then I'll just add 62 grams of protein for that meal. And then I'll just add fat macro, carb macro. Um, Cause my mom you know, does up these macros. So if you have a recipe and you know the, the content, you can just put it in individually like that. It needs to dethaw a little bit, but you can see we got some chickpeas in here. We got some kidney beans, ground turkey, some peppers, garlic in there. It's just super healthy meal. Probably, probably my most healthy meal of the day. Super high fiber, and I like to have fiber later at night. One, gonna help me feel more satiated, and two, is gonna slow the rate of digestion a little bit. Um, so I tend to have a bit of a longer overnight fast. Like it'll usually be maybe 10 or 12 hours that I go without eating. Um, so I try to cram a lot of fiber in, eat slower digesting sources of protein later in the day. Um, so anyway, gonna heat this up again and enjoy. Do a little taste test. Oh yeah, I also added about 15 grams of shredded cheese on top. I think that makes it taste so much better. Mmm. That's so good. I forgot to say also, um, my mom I think got this recipe online, so I'll put the link to the recipe in the description if you guys wanna make it for yourself. After this, I think I'm gonna go play a bit of basketball. I've been playing in like a little men's league <laughs> here in Kelowna, so I'm gonna go shoot some hoops. This is a huge meal, so I tried to time it about like an hour before I'd go play. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna down this, do a bit of work, and then go shoot some hoops. So I'll put the macros for the meal up here on the screen if you guys are interested in that. Super high protein and also very high fiber meal and I'll check in with you guys for my last meal before I go to bed. Just got back from basketball. <laughs> for whatever reason, when I run full court basketball, it absolutely kills me. So I'm feeling so tired right now. I, I ran for, well, it's quarter to 10 now. So what was it, a couple hours? A couple hours. Um, so we got one more meal to go toward the end of the day here now. So this is gonna be our last meal. I was gonna point out to you guys, um, I've been reading through this, this thesis, I showed it earlier uh, from Jorn, and another one of his main points in the book, he's actually written about this for a while, but he, he's kind of big on pre-sleep being potentially important feeding window. Um, so he says here, an important and missed opportunity to consume a high protein meal in well-trained athletes is before going to bed. And I do think it's an underrated time of day because it's when you're gonna go the longest without eating again. So you have, so you're basically at the greatest risk of catabolism 
when you're fasting, so when you go to bed. So anyway, I've been trying to really optimize this meal. I'm gonna show you guys what I get. We are gonna go with cottage cheese. So cottage cheese is a very slow digesting protein, primarily from casein, basically forms a clump in your stomach and then it takes time for those amino acids to be uh, uh, digested and absorbed. Um, so we're gonna go with some of that and I've been eating that with some of these wheat thins over here. So get a few of these crackers, dip it in the cottage cheese. Don't knock it until you tried it, it's actually really good. Oh, and can't forget, good old, good old kale salad with some turkey breast. Turkey on salad, and I like to put a little bit of cheese on this one too. But bam, I actually love cottage cheese. This is, this is a treat. I'm serious, it's so good. I love it, bro. <laughs> Rashawn's face. Just like, <laughs> that's the first thing <laughs> <laughs> I, I seriously love it. Oh, what? So it's really... Same as the chili, I'll add a little bit of cheese on top. I typically uh, would just eat these as a snack when I'm watching the TV. So lately I've been re-watching the Breaking Bad series and I just started season five and I'm convinced that Breaking Bad is the greatest show of all time. Rewatching it gave me such a deeper appreciation for it because I watched it when it first aired and now rewatching it I just I feel like I appreciate the show so much more so I haven't seen the movie that's out yet I want to finish the fifth season first But yeah, if anyone has any show recommendations that you think that you think is better than Breaking Bad comment below But I personally don't think it exists so I'm gonna watch a few episodes of that probably as I eat this meal so These are puffed potatoes. They're kind of like rice crisps, but obviously with potato, I guess, but they're really low uh, carb per serving, really high volume. So it just makes for like a really nice light snack. So yeah, I love these. If you haven't, if you haven't tried them, I don't know if they're available everywhere. We have them here in Canada, but yeah, these are, these are awesome. So I'm gonna put the macros for this meal uh, up here on the screen. We got 40 grams of protein, 23 grams of fat, and 72 grams of carbs for 630 calories. So I'm gonna enjoy this last meal. I'm gonna flick on an episode of Breaking Bad over here. If you guys are interested in checking out uh, the new nutrition guide, make sure you hit up that pre-sale uh, link at the first link in the description box down below. Um, also, I did wanna say that in this video, I did focus on some of the finer details of nutrition, which I actually find most interesting. And that is the tone that we take in the book. However, we do also cover the basics where basically if you wanted to get, you know, some of the results or probably most of the results, you could just focus on hitting your calories, hitting your macros, and we go through all the details in terms of how to set that up in the book, but then also go several <laughs> layers deeper and explain all the complexities of nutrition in there. Um, so I think it's a really great resource. If you're interested, hit up the button over here next to my head. Um, that'll take you to the pre-order link. Um, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all here in the next one.